to another episode of Blade Clan Health and Fitness. I'm Brian, and Dave, um, Dave's not here. Uh, he ran off a second ago to pick up some mail. Yo, 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 what up, motherfucker? I got some papers. Here's some papers. That's right, motherfuckers. Today I got something special for y'all. We're going to dig through some of our fan mail and messages to answer some questions and talk about some things that all the viewers in YouTube land want to know about. Okay, let's get started here. Uh, oh my god, you crazy fat bastard. You cooked an egg in the microwave. What the hell is wrong with you? Don't you know how dangerous that can be? You could get sick. Plus, it's totally gross. What the fuck, B? Where are you getting this attitude from, dog? I thought you liked my recipe. I, w I was just reading the letter. Oh, okay. My bad, homie. Um, hugs and kisses, a fan. Oh, alright, okay. Well, um, a fan, if that is your real name up in this piece, with your pink pen and sexy handwriting, I actually get the idea from a couple of places. See, one of my favorite places to eat out when I'm not in the mood for fast food is your mom. <laughs> no, seriously, y'all. I love me some porter subs. This ain't no official endorsement or nothing, but they make these breakfast sandwiches that are off the hook. Part of, the, of that is they microwave the eggs in these little bowl things. So I got to think maybe I should do that. So I bought my carton of faux eggs, and right there on the side, it's got these instructions on how to make the eggs in the microwave. See, but their shit was only saying you should microwave for 30 seconds. I put that shit on nuclear blast for over a minute and a half, so that shit was cooked all kinds of thorough. I ain't trying to spend all day blowing my guts all over the bathroom. So it's all in the good. Thanks for all that concern you showing. Next time, though, maybe send a couple of scandalous pictures with your letter? Anyway... Let's keep keeping on with this bitch. Uh, let's see. Alright, here's one for you, B. Hey guys, I just finished watching your shows. We appreciate that. Um, where do you guys work out? I've been looking at gyms in the area, and I was hoping you could tell me which one would be the best for me. Love those videos. When is Tay going to be back on the show? Sincerely, Trevor Graves from Philly. Uh, you want to kick this one off, B? Well, Trevor, it sounds like you're really committing to your fitness goals, and that's great. Uh, the hardest part for a lot of people is just getting started. So let's talk about gyms for a minute. A lot of what's going to really help you decide the gym that's right for you is going to be a combination of two things. Your goals, and the resources that the gym can offer you. Most of the big franchise gyms across the country offer a good mix of equipment and classes to help you reach your particular goal. And they offer a good mix of fine-ass bitches for your viewing pleasure. So, if you're just looking to trim weight, uh, maybe you should look at some cardio equipment. And if you're looking to bulk up and get big muscles, uh, take a look at the weight machines and free weights. Uh, the biggest thing to consider is the one resource that's hardest to see. The inside of the women's locker room? No, Dave. Encouragement and motivation. A lot of people have memberships to gyms but never go. They sign up after a New Year's Eve resolution special offer, go a few times, and then either get discouraged by a lack of gains or get intimidated by people who have been doing it in the gym longer than they have. Uh, so let that, they let that membership eat away at their wallets while they just sit on the couch. Unfortunately, people have some misconceptions about how weight loss and getting in shape really work. Yeah, like they're just going to jump on the treadmill and some Tinkerbell looking fairy is just going to fly by, wave that magic fucking wand, and your shit's going to change up, and you're going to get all thin in a day. But that's just not how it works. Even after having the best equipment and facilities available, you won't see results without the work, and depending on where you're starting it, uh, you could have a long road ahead of you. So if your struggle is with actually getting into the gym, you may want to consider bringing a friend along. Having a set schedule and a committed gym buddy not only makes the time in the gym more enjoyable, but it also holds you accountable. And it makes shit safer too. Remember that one day I tried to lift a, up my weight a little too dramatically? I lifted the bar and damn near got crushed my arms wore down too fast. 
He snatched that weight up like it weren't no thing and kept me from getting fitted for a toe tag. I told you that was too much weight. Uh, so getting back to the first half of the question, Dave and I work out at the gym at the apartment complex I live in. It's well equipped with free weights and actual machines. Uh, there's a cardio area as well and a sauna and a hot tub. It's got all the best parts of a big franchise gym without the hassle of being too busy. Yeah. We used to work out at my apartment's gym, but Mr. Universe here got so buff and tough that he reached the highest weight on the machines. Now at my gym there's one treadmill, which is busted as fuck, a multi-station weight with some broken stations, a busted ass old extra bike that works but hasn't really challenged me because all you do is pedal, and one of them redden in place machines where your feet swing around. An optical. Yeah, that shit, man. It it works, and it's good for the cardio, so I can't gonna complain. Uh, the gym ain't much to look at, really, but it's good enough for a start. And maybe one of these days I'll take the camera down there and show you how to make the most of that busted-ass equipment. So I hope that answers your question, and good luck on finding that gym. Might be closer than oh, you yeah, think. Oh, yeah, a good one. Um, Dagger Lords. What the hell kind of a name is that? I don't know. Uh, something about it fills me with a deep sense of disappointment. But it's, it's a cool name. Word. So anyway, uh, Dagger writes, Hey y'all, what's up with you motherfuckers? Yeah. Me and my boys have been watching the show, and there's something you said sparked a debate, Big D. You said you gotta keep the work happy. We've been trying to figure out what you meant. Can you help a homie out? This one's all you, Big D. Oh, you funny. <laughs> Alright, so here's the 411 on the work happy. The work happy is that feeling you get from a job well done. When you hit the gym and don't come out so you can't move your body right, knowing that you left it all in that gym, it can be applied to other things too, you know, sports, like, um, you know, back in the day, Gretzky, Oilers, you know, they won the cup, that's the work happy. You know, you could apply it at work, um, but mostly I just use it as a gym term. Yeah, and hopefully that clears it up for you. Hmm. So, the work happy is the rush of endorphins you get when you put your body through its paces. I actually never understood that either until just now. Yeah, I guess, and it's not all scienced up. What, what was that? It just, it was just junk mail. Now, come on, dog, read that shit. We gotta listen to our fans. Alright, fine, you asked for it. I asked for it. Alright, so... Jack Rako writes, What the fuck did I just watch? Some fat retard playing with his toy is trying to explain something. He doesn't really even understand. Who the fuck are you trying to fool? Talking about fitness and health? At least the little guy looks like he's in shape. Are you supposed to be a bad example? B, you better talk to this fool. I'm about to blow the fuck up right now. I guess the easiest thing to say is that we all live our lives differently. And it was only a few years ago that I was a little overweight and unhappy with my choices. So I decided to change things. In time, I've been working out and eating right. I've lost weight and gained muscle. And now I'm passing out uh, what I've learned to my friends. So uh, it may not look like it at the moment, but since we started this video, uh, he's dropped pounds and inches and... One of these days, you're going to look back at the original videos and see a big difference in how he looks. That's right, motherfucker. I'm a living work in progress. This mother right here, this motherfucker is the mad scientist. And I'm the monster he's building. So fuck the fuck off before I dump your ass in a river. What? Did, did you just reference Frankenstein? Nah, dog. It, it just sounded good, you know, dumping somebody in a river. But... Shut up, bitch! Where, where did you... Yeah, okay, whatever. Um, how about another letter? We've got time for another one, I think. All right, well, I got the last one. Um, okay, all right. So uh, this letter is from Marcus Donovan. Oh, wait, no, it says Marcus the Premium Man Donovan. Sounds kind of like a douche, B. But I guess he's a fan, so I'll let that shit slide. He writes, Okay, fat guy and muscle midget. 
motherfucker really two in a row, two in a fucking row. All right, he continues. What the premium one wants to know is where do you two ass clowns get off calling that overblown nightmare of a sandwich health food? The premium man is a personal trainer, and in no way, shape, or form is that muscle sandwich a healthy eating alternative. On behalf of the millions, dot, 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 he wrote dot three times, and millions of the, really, of the premium man's fans, we're requesting that you two jabronis take down that video and issue an apology to the people who fell for that lame-ass prank. The premium one would expect that kind of stupidity from fat guy, but not from you muscle midget. You two need to shape up, especially the fat fuck in the little chair. First of all, you third person speaking motherfucker. This ain't for no pansy ass personal trainer who thinks if it ain't green salad, it ain't good for you. This is a sandwich that the gods themselves smile at. And when those gods of the old world come down in their rocket ships covered in marmalade, you will find yourself judged for your lack of proper tire maintenance. The seven worlds of the cosmos will overrun the tree trunks and turn anthills into raging volcanoes of death. The ancient sages don't care how many licks it takes to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. Their pomegranate flavor justice will rain down like Diet Coke and Mentos, spraying on the brains of goldfish. The ultimate goal of, of waxing the cellar door will permit the old gods to trample through your comic book collection and build Lego fortresses. Your delusions of self-betterment are a big-lipped alligator moment in the face of terror and destruction. And like the power of duct tape, I will hold together the broken feathers of eternity with a Harley Davidson collector's knife. These acts will lead to not only the destruction of yourself, but of the, but of the very fabric of all the waffles in creation. Ah, 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 ah. Who the fuck was that, B? Uh, you're doing that thing again that you told your therapist about. Shit. Okay. All right. Where was I? Don't, don't worry about it. You answered the question. And that's really all the time that we've got here for today. Uh, so if we didn't read your question yet, uh, don't worry. Uh, we'll do this again soon. But thanks for watching another episode of Blake Klein Health and Fitness. Yeah, we put in the research so you don't gotta. Whoop whoop. Now I'm all soggy, dog. I'm gonna dry off and go make a sandwich.